Creating a forecast sheet is something new to Excel 2016 and is very helpful. Let's take our forecast working file. You can see here we have some sales for 2016 for each of the months, January until October. Now, if we wanted to predict, for example, what November and December might be like, or even what next year might be like, then we could do some of our own calculations and experimentations, or we could see what Excel could offer us with the forecast sheet. Now, to create the forecast sheet, we simply click into the data that we want to forecast on, go to the data ribbon, and come across to forecast sheet. This then opens the create forecast worksheet dialog box, and without changing any of the additional options, we can control how far in the future the forecast should go. So mine has gone for next April, so April 2017, or it might be that I just want to predict to the end of the year. I can change that to the 31st of December. Now you can see it's a line graph. The blue is the values that I've given it, those here. The orange is the predicted forecast with an upper and a higher boundary. So within that is how close they think they can be. This is where the forecast goes, but potentially it could be down here or potentially it could be up there. Now that's seeing things as a line chart. I can change this to a column here. I do quite like the column for forecasting once it's creating it, because the solid chunks of blue again, blue's the current values, orange are the predictions, and then these vertical bars here are the upper and outer boundaries of the potential range. If I'm happy with that or the line, I simply click Create. Just before we click Create, though, let's explore the additional options. In the additional options, I can change where the forecast starts from. Now, you can see it starts from the month after where I finished, effectively, and then goes ahead. I could, if I wanted, go a little bit further back from there to September, and you can see then it projects October as well. So the value that I have in there, 15, is changed when using the forecasting to be a different value. So I'm going to change that back to 1st of October. I can control the confidence level. Now I can either remove that completely, which is the up and down bars there or on the line chart. It's the upper and outer boundary. Maybe I don't wish to see that range of confidence. Or I can leave it in and actually amend the value. So I can reduce confidence values. And you can see the lines, effectively the range is smaller and smaller, the smaller this percentage gets higher that percentage gets, the boundary gets bigger and bigger, so the lower boundary and the upper boundary. If we have seasonality, we can leave this to be detected automatically, or I can set it manually, and that number there determines how many of these periods effectively associate a season. So I'm going to leave it as detect automatically, and it will deal as a whole year. This is my timeline range, this is my value range already selected here, I don't need to amend those. If I have any missing data points, if I'd only provided some of the months and perhaps I didn't have value for May, I can tell Excel how to deal with the gap. And the choices are interpolation or just put zeros in there. The fact is in my data, there are no missing points. If I have duplicate values, so if in my data, perhaps I had two sets of values for May and two sets of value for June and three for July, I need to tell Excel how to deal with multiple values. And here we have average, so it takes the values and averages them. Or we have median, which might be a preferred choice of your own. Or you can actually sum them up. So if you've got two values for June, let's add them together. To give me a total for June, which might be the preference. It really depends on your own data. So these are the additional options. You can create your forecast without even looking at the additional options, should you wish to. And we can change the confidence. We can adjust how it deals with missing points or with duplicate points. Once you're happy, we can minimize the options and just click Create. Now, when you create a forecast sheet, as this little box tells us, thank you, I've got it, it creates a new sheet. So you've got your original one, which is where my data is, and then it creates a new sheet, which is effectively my data copied over. So there's the months and the sales, and then here are the forecasted values. And this data is then placed in a chart. You can see if I just move the chart slightly over, the upper and lower confidence values are also in there. So the blue is my provided data, the orange is Excel's forecast. So this is a new option introduced in Excel 2016, allows you to take a set of timeline data effectively and forecast ahead. In this case, I forecasted the rest of the year, but I could have forecasted 2017 as well, simply by clicking in, select, forecast, forecast end. Well, let's go all the way to the end of 2017, show it and see what happens. So there's the forecast. 
based on the data that I've already provided for the current year. There's going to be a little bit of up and downy throughout the whole of 2017, according to the forecast.